good afternoon. I hope you had a, a good meeting of the ground here. Um, and uh, right now we'll start this program. That's going to be the activity that Kikil Week will bring us. But first, we're going to hear the words from Caroline to the video. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody had a nice break. Yes. Yes. You look very activated <laughs> in the dark. Anyway, so uh, I have uh, the honor to, introdu to, yeah, to introduce actually Kikilwe and the young professionals. Um, yeah, since last year already for years, we're trying to see how we can attract and invite uh, our younger women also to the Women's Federation. And uh, last year we were talking about, we were kind of assessing who is there, which country, and uh, trying to yeah, motivate and address this point of um, inviting and getting uh, younger women here. So there are, of course, different generations. Uh, for example, uh, Kifilwe and me, we are kind of from the same uh, age group. But we also have some young sisters who could actually be our children biologically. So it's nice to have <laughs> different, different decades, like different generations, and um, and to have this also this international uh, intergenerational um, cooperation and spirit because we believe that um, a lot can come about from this intergenerational working as well. So recently we have been brainstorming a bit about um, how we can uh, attract or invite the different age ranges. And we came up with these three, but um, we also will have time to brainstorm a little bit more after our talk. And uh, we came up with like some, for example, some people like me um, may be attracted to uh, UN related uh, topics. Uh, the Women's Federation is uh, active in the UN and there's a broad spectrum there uh, to be involved. Oh, excuse me. Um, and yeah, perhaps you would think more about students, but it can be anyone who could be uh, interested to contribute to the UN work. Um, also, of course, there's the Young Professionals, an initiative from the Women's Federation International. And like we know, Kikilwe has been active uh, uh, in this realm already for some time. She will say something more a bit later about it. Uh, and yeah, as we know, I think a lot of second generation, for example, are in this age group that uh, they are young professionals, perhaps already started a family or not. So we think it will resonate with a lot of young, younger people, younger women. And also uh, we came up with like, yeah, Mothers for Peace, because actually the Women's Federation is also a lot about motherhood and being a mother, having a parental heart and bringing solutions in, uh, from this motherly heart. Um, and we thought like maybe perhaps the mothers or young mothers do not think it's maybe an option to also be involved as a mother within the Women's Federation. So we just wanted to put that out there um, uh, as, a, as food for thought to think about all these fields together and maybe we can uh, add some more fields. But this was just from our recent brainstorming. So and now we want to just zoom in a little bit more into the young professionals. Um, yeah, so um, I was not, not too much involved with all the pre-brainstorming, but Kithiwa will say something more about it. Uh, but um, we wanted to, um, how to say, to structure more um, inviting um, people into the young professionals. And we came up, it was actually kind of, uh, initiated by the UK chapter uh, with a volunteer and internship uh, uh, overview and how to um, invite them. So Kithua will say a little bit more about that, but we wanted to see like how we can overcome, overcome challenges in recruiting young members. Uh, we want to support and learn from each other as chapters, so we will have time and space to uh, uh, brainstorm in a little bit. Uh, using best practices, uh, hearing from each other, and um, yeah, from all fields of, all working fields or fields of life. Um, and yeah, we also want to be more specific with job descriptions, what kind of vacancies we have. Uh, Mickey already mentioned something about it earlier today. 
Uh, so it can be more specific and people can actually also uh, respond to those specific things. Um, and so we have um, made up a form, like a, a, a registration form for volunteers and for intern, uh, inter intern people for internships. And uh, Kiti will, will say something more about it. And the, the idea is to uh, attract people with this registration form, really um, um, fine-tune uh, what is expected, and then after some period, like six months, have some evaluation and renewal of the contract. So as a volunteer, volunteer and as an intern. So that was um, what we have been thinking about so far. And then I would like to welcome Kitty Lueck to uh, say a little bit more about it's the same uh, it's the same PowerPoint it's the same presentation oh yeah <laughs> so uh, Kitty will say a little bit more about um, the the form and how we want to invite you to brainstorm with us together um hi again everyone so I will be talking about the form that is already being used by Women Federation UK and they use it for internships and also for volunteering. Um, for internships it might be a bit more complex because it could be regulated by the labour laws in um, your own specific countries. So you might need to put in a little bit of more research into that. But for volunteering, it applies for what we all do in our daily Women Federation work. And um, the importance of taking our daily tasks and putting them in a, or labeling them as professional is very important. Um, for myself, personally, I worked in the banking sector previously. And when I moved to Germany, I wanted a job closer to my heart in the field of development and one of the requirements was um, experience in development. I did not have a paid professional experience in this field but I put all my Women Federation work on my CV and that definitely helped me to, to get the job. So I think a lot of young people should know that they can benefit from this. So I'm just going to go through the form that um, Women Federation UK is using. I hope you can see. Um, can you enlarge it? Can you make it bigger? Can you make it bigger? Is this better? Yeah. It's better, yeah. I will, I'm, I will read through it. Okay. So this is a volunteer and internship scheme and it says we believe in enabling you to acquire the knowledge and skills, um, access opportunities and break barriers. Our volunteer and internship scheme enable candidates to build confidence, gain practical skills and become role ready and bridge the gap to employment. And um, I'm just going to read through the criteria. And this is the criteria for the UK, so anyone can just adapt it to suit their own chapters. Um, <coughs> essential candidate criteria, desire to learn, um, develop commitment to the process, the candidate must be reliable, they must have good written and spoken English or whatever uh, the requirement could be in your country and this is just an example, they said good IT skills, so it could be whatever skills that you need in your own country and then what the candidate can expect is commitment to your personal development, initial support and supervision, ongoing one-on-one -on -one support, work-based training, mentorship training and skills development in, li in line with needs of role. So this could once again be ad adapted to suit your specific chapter. And this is the actual application form and it just requires 
basic personal detail. And um, one important part, it says, tell us a bit about yourself. And then um, it also asks for educational or qualifications that the person has. And then it also asks for work and training history. I'll have to do the same. The same thing. Okay. Yeah. Although it's two. There's two. Yeah, you can. And then this is the section of volunteering. Why are you interested in volunteering? What would you like to volunteer for? And indicate the roles that you're interested in. And the next question is, what would you like to gain from volunteering? Indicate any key skills, passions, interests, and what is your availability? This is very important because it also encourages the applicant to be focused and think about what they want. And it also shows that Women Federation has something to offer. So it's not just about uh, the volunteer coming in to do something, it's the volunteer coming in to gain something. And um, when I speak to young people, they are also afraid that they would, you know, if they just take one step in, they're going to get sucked in and <laughs> not be able to escape. So if you look at this form, it, you know, it, it, uh, it tells about, it asks about the availability. So the person could say, I have um, this many hours in a week, in a month, in a quarter, and this would enable uh, both parties to come to an agreement. And with a process like this, you, everybody would be able to respect it. And then it also asks, do you have any support needs? And the next question, please tell us about any medical issues, allergies, um, or needs that we should be aware of for health and safety, well-being, um, which is relevant for you to volunteer. The next question, have you, been, have you ever been convicted of a criminal offence? If yes, please um, give details. We know that you know uh, the way Women Federation is progressing, and um, as our international president um, advises us, we need to be as accurate as possible, as precise as possible, so that we can give um, the necessary support. And then um, the next section is just uh, for references. And then the last part is the data protection and media consent form. Um, I would like to thank Women Federation UK for giving us this form and I would like to encourage all of you here to um, get a copy of this form, adapt it according to your country's needs and use it um, as soon as possible, even if um, you already have existing volunteers. Um, I would also like to encourage everybody to recruit at least one young professional. I know Mitty mentioned uh, something like that. And to please try out this process and maybe the next time we meet, we can discuss the advantages, the disadvantages, and we will be able to learn from more countries. And can I say something? So after this conference, can we make a folder on Google Drive with the different information, including this form from this conference. And I will send the link so you can go there and find it. Okay, and now it's time for a brainstorming session. I think we are 26. Yes, 26. 26. 26. Okay, so there are four people, Esperanta, Carmen, Tanyan, and Erica. So they, the four will be leading uh, the session, and we will be discussing these two questions. What are the challenges with recruiting young people? And how can we break these barriers? So if we could be maybe six to seven in a group.
what time is it now? How much time do we have? Yeah. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. No, no, 3 minutes. And we have until 4 30. It's 4 o'clock. Okay, so if we could break for. 20 minutes. Because we also need time for feedback. Yeah. So okay, so. Okay, so let's break for uh, 20 minutes into four groups. I think. Um, group one. And it's three minutes for each of us. No, we turn. Um, so we first um, talked about um, our first gen. Don't know how to really work uh, uh, with young people and to incorporate um, young people uh, in the Women's Federation and why this is one, like maybe one of the biggest issues. So um, we really need a system to support new volunteers. And from that, um, Mitty was explaining that through this, that help to uh, feel. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought I had it. Well, um, <laughs> um, Mitty was explaining that through this um, form, uh, we can really incorporate better. Um, but then the question was, was like, do we really know how to work with these forms? So. We, we will be needing some um, some training on that, um, um, and that will be provided eventually in the future. Um, um, but something that is really important, uh, if we really want to apply this in a good way in our countries, is to have definite uh, definite projects that we want to realize and um, specific jobs that we want people to go into. Uh, have specific job descriptions that we can really like present the form and say okay you're going to this or you're going to do that um, and also we this needs to be like we, we need to have a lot of structure and to be honest is something that yeah I'm not used to in our um, movement um, uh, but no 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 I mean, oh, not like that yeah it is like that <laughs> like really bad, but like structure in the legal matters and um, related to health insurance and that was something that uh, Mitty was also clearing that we will be needing um, well, health insurance yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and legal structure um, also we talked about how it's important to also focus not only on chapters that are already um, set, set up established, yeah, uh, chapters that are already established and have a lot of people, but also like the chapters that are, um, that have fewer people, like one or two, um, and it's important also to, in those chapters, start to work. Uh, and for that, um, it's really good to have uh, smaller projects, uh, but also start with projects that have like a, a good structure. Um, then uh, we also talked about how it would be good also to involve second generation, um, maybe to begin with, because it will be easier. Uh, uh, it will be easier um, to start with um, second generation as they have the, the values and everything, and then from that we can um, broaden. Um, and. Uh, And we talked, yeah, sorry. And we talked about um, uh, the also how we can use like the bigger examples uh, to the smaller ones. Uh, for example, the UK chapter can be an example to the um, Lebanon one. Yeah, and mentoring. Yeah. <laughs> so I was group number two. Yes, so um, I will be more brief, but uh, yeah, um, uh, the ladies liked the idea of the four in our group, and um, we were discussing what are the challenges to uh, bring younger uh, ladies, and uh, some of the chapters had young ladies, but then they go away to marry or to study, and um, yeah, a solution for that is just to attract young ladies from the outside, basically. And for that also the form is very nice because it really specifies what is expected, what are the needs, 
and to really have a more formal commitment and that the expectations are more clear from both sides. So we think it will be also more productive and a nice way to uh, work together. But also if you look, if we want to still um, advertise the Women's Federation within within the second generation community, it's also very clear because you can very specifically make agreements like I have this amount of time, I don't have to do everything and it's very, um, we think it will be quite comfortable if people are interested. So also this point of that the people have mentioned that it's uh, like a good thing, it can be a good thing for your CV, it's also something that we also want to promote actually because I think we think that not everyone thinks about that. Um, and then we also will, um, said something like it's also nice maybe for example there was a northern country and their children like the sun so maybe we can send them here to Italy to help out Elisabetta so uh, maybe also this internal uh, supporting and cooperating can help us and identifying the needs and skills of uh, the young ladies did I miss something I'm looking to my group Somebody wants to learn skiing, they can come tomorrow. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was more the point that you know we can see that many times we can see the gaps. Like that's one thing Mandy has said, well, we're gap fillers at the minute, and but we can't really get in there. So what we did recently was we did a survey for of all the members, an anonymous survey, and and at one of those questions, just ask them what, what they see, what could improve. We didn't in a positive way we put it through what can you improve and what so then anyway, we also put out your skill set so we're now going to follow up with getting specific skill sets from everybody what they could contribute and also we send in your cvs because oftentimes you're not going to tell you know or you you might even miss what you've done down the line so the point is to kind of have this general affairs department is that what we call it it is missing in our community but possibly i don't know about you but possibly wouldn't it be amazing to have a general affairs department here where you can can, you know you can overview things and start to to match up things because for well for us we really care about the second gen youth in skiing we really feel they're quite isolated and you know from talking to the second gen they're hurt from things that have happened and they would say one of the boys in particular who came back from an experience and said I'm done I'm done I went with such commitment and if the hurt came from older second gen that were put in there not experienced enough have the heart of the parent and then caused some issues. My point being, it's the integration of the first and second gen it's to get the skill set that the set first gen have and actually incorporate. Sorry, but that's my point was yes. to have this overview of everything and start to switch the needs in within and help each other in the transition. Thank you, thank you for this addition. Thank you. The challenges that what, that we see by to attracting people, there are three uh, challenges that stood out. Firstly, just where to find young people and people that are uh, yeah interested and have good values and uh, have something that can offer. Um, the second is with just time. <laughs> when you find these people, uh, how do you find time to to educate them and support them and yeah um, and uh, carry on this work like helping them uh, to learn and. Yeah, <laughs> um, and also how to just uh, how to have more structure. Even yeah, they mentioned sometimes you find people who are interested, but it's it's hard to to get them like more uh, motivated or how to yeah how to uh, <laughs> help them. Anyway, instead it was hard for them to stick sometimes. So we need more structure and just uh, develop how what we can do with these young people and just have more programs. And yeah, a few solutions came up. Firstly, uh, there was mentioned this this young women's um, speech contest as a very good way to attract young people because as yeah as doing this this project and showcasing what our values are it attracts a lot of attention and get people involved uh, who have the same values and who have the same um, and are responsible and want to develop the same things. 
and that's how you can find <laughs> these kind of gems <laughs> and good people to attract and to work with. So these kind of projects, trying to develop that um, as an example, and just more as well, uh, trying to find other things that we can do. Also, it was mentioned that the Peace Academy. Academy. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of trying to get them um, interested first and then start to work with them. Um, with the second, yeah, with the time time issue, it's, yeah, it's quite big, especially people, I need to have it all night and <laughs> their phone works and everything. Uh, so it's hard to manage always. So how to, how to invest your time into helping these young people that you attract. And one thought that came up was to create teams. So instead of being just one person, mentoring one person, or just having all this, um, Anyways, it's hard to manage, so creating teams where you can share the work and support each other and try to um, yeah, solve kind of these issues. And the third solution also I, I picked up on, I forgot what it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, developing projects um, to get people interested and involved. Yeah, kind of building some sort of structure of when you find these people, what kind of projects can you do and how can you educate them and get them more involved and more, yeah, mm-hmm. integrated in an organization. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we also had this uh, group four a uh, very nice discussion. Um, we thought we think that the um, the four. Is very um, interesting. It's very good. Um, we like the idea um, of having clarity. Uh, it's nice to have a structure, um, and I think some, sometimes it was a bit lacking. Um, we see the challenges, uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm myself kind of young, so I see myself. It's a kind of like a bit. It's hard sometimes. It's difficult. You have, I mean, you have like an interest in women's liberation or like in the project, but you're always like a bit like, hmm, am I now? Do I fit in? So it's kind of like getting those young ladies more, more interest. It's, it's not easy, but I, we like the idea um, to um, have clearly explained what's the project, what's the goal, um, when it's going to be, um, if it's a long term, for example, we had one lady from uh, London, I guess, or like uh, England, uh, with the project, uh, with the art project. It's like they know we have this project, and they know okay we have a time schedule. So it's good to know um, when it's being done, what it's needed, um, so that the people, um, also the people that are organizing it, the leadership can know exactly. Uh, they know exactly what they want, what they need. From the people, so um, it's good then that you have like a like a good team of, of people um, with different set of skills, and the leader knows exactly. Okay, I have this lady; she's good in that. I'm gonna use her. I'm gonna ask her if she wants um, to help. So um, yeah, we. I mean, I thought it's kind of like a really good, uh, a, a very big help for leadership because often we hear. From the leadership, oh, I'm the one. I mean, that's what I, what we, what we always uh, saw. You have one person uh, with the, with the, with the power in the hand, and they do everything. Mm. And me, as more younger, let's say, um, I don't want to do everything. <laughs> I see the power in having a team. I yeah. see the, the collaboration as a as a strength. So, um, so I think that's that's a very good tool to have. Uh, a form like that, and also having a clear vision for the year. I think that's that's something that we wanna maybe develop now in Germany. Uh, like working, <laughs> like having a specific amount of events that you wanna do um, in a year, and start to think about at the beginning of the year. Okay, I wanna do this, this, and that. Who can help me? Um, where can I do it? On which level? Is it a national level? Is it a, a root grass level? So it's, I like it. I like it. We <laughs> like it a lot. <laughs> so thank you so much for participating. I hope that you feel encouraged and supported and that going forward you will start using the form. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, I have some things I can offer. Um, the second is the is time. <laughs> when you find these people, uh, how do you find time to, to educate them and support them and yeah, um, I mean, uh, carry on this work, like helping them uh, learn and yeah. <laughs> um, and also how to just uh, how to have more structure even yeah the internet, sometimes you find people who are interested but it's it's hard to to get them like more uh, motivated or how to yeah how to uh, <laughs> have them anyways it was said it was hard for them to stick sometimes so maybe more structure and just uh, develop how what we can do with these young people and how they were invented this this young women's um, speech contest as a very good way to attracting people because as yeah as doing this this project and showcasing what our values are that attracts a lot of attention and gets people involved uh, who have the same values and who have the same um, and they are responsible and want to develop the same thing and that's how you can find <laughs> these kind of gems <laughs> and good people to attract and to work with so these kind of projects trying to develop that um, as an example and just more as well uh, trying to find other things that we can do also it was mentioned uh, the peace academy academy <laughs> um yeah kind of trying to get them um interested first and then to start to work with them um with the second yeah with the time time issue it's yeah it's like big especially people and you can have it online and <laughs> it <doesn't laughs> work everything uh, so it's hard to manage always so how to how to invest your time into helping these young people that you attract and one thought that came up was to create teams so instead of being just one person entering one person or just having all this um, and it's hard to manage so creating teams where you can share the work and support each other and try to um, yeah, solve kind of these issues and the third solution also I, I picked up on I forgot what it was <laughs> yeah yeah developing projects um, to get people interested and involved yeah kind of building some sort of structure of when you find people, what kind of projects can you do and how can you educate them and get them more involved and more yeah, integrated in, in the organization. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>